Hi, this is Robert. Welcome to my Volvo S70 restoration YouTube video series. If you would like to attempt to see these videos in order, go to my channel, which you click there, Robert DIY. Once you're on my channel, click the playlist link that is there. It'll take you to all my playlists. And once you see my playlist, roll your uh, pointer over the play all button on the Volvo restoration videos and click that and it should play all of the videos in order. I hope the series encourages you to restore your car. Okay, Friday I picked up my head from the head shop. It was that clean and made true. So the bottom of it, let me flip it over here real quick, is spotless like brand new because it's been plain flat. But I'm disappointed in this vac cleaning process because I still got a lot of junk and buildup, especially on a couple of those valves. Uh, so I'm going to clean that off because I don't need another burnt valve. And uh, there's some nasty stuff in the top of the head. And there's still some sealant on here and on the uh, cover. So I'm going to finish cleaning this up. Of course, I've gotten the heads back from the head shop I mean spotless this is the second time I got one back that wasn't as clean as I thought it should be and uh, you know the price is right but I'm gonna check with another shop to see if if they'll get them cleaner for me the next time I have one to take and get done a lot of times when I'm dealing with these heads I see this port that comes up through here that these 94s normally have something plugged up to but uh this hole uh, dead ends on top of the head. It, it, it doesn't have anything inside of it, so I don't have to worry about plugging that. That hole dead ends right here, that little ring that you see on there. So I'm going to get these uh, seals out of here from the spark plug wells and go ahead and get these uh, cams timed. It's super, super easy to figure out what is the intake cam and what is the exhaust cam when the uh, things are still on there. As you can see, this disc is where the distributor bolts on to. So that's, of course, the intake cam. So I'll put that here. And the uh, be careful with your journals when you set those in there and pull them out. And, of course, the one with this disc on the back of it is on the exhaust cam because that goes through your uh, cam sensor okay when that rotor cap came off it also pulled the the uh, cam seal with it full of sludge um the hole there is not clogged up that's another thing i'd like for you to see is the orientation of the cam seals as you can see that cam seals out and it can be pushed back even in this head and these cam seals can be slid over the camshaft with the sprocket on there. So you don't need to pull the sprocket off to put your cam seals on. And this one on the back is flush on the back. And you can see how much space there is for oil to get back in there through the uh, journals and through the cam cover. The cam cover has channels that feeds oil down through those uh, inside those seal areas to keep those journals lubricated uh, throughout the length of that cam. And here's the cover and you can see the, the small passages that feed those uh, uh, cam uh, seal areas and that. And this one looks like a couple of those were ports were uh, clogged. So I'm going to make sure they're all clear and when I put this back on I'm going to put a thin layer of the anaerobic sealant on there so none of those get clogged, hopefully. Just taking another look at those cam seals. The rear ones look like they can be pushed all the way in, and that'll be fine because it has that space there. And I don't see any evidence of any channels that would be blocked if it is pushed all the way in. But on the ones on the front, it looks like they should be not pushed all the way in because I can see traces of channels that need to feed behind them and if they're pushed all the way in that may be blocked but they look like they're in the lip area all the way so they're pushed in a little bit but not all the way in would be the perfect 
uh, setting for them. Just a reminder, you got to be real careful of your cam journals up there. So you always want to set the back of the cams in first and lower the journals down into the tracks up there. And when you lift these out, lift them out from a this end, the front end. Never lift them out from the back end or you'll bust those uh, cam journals off the front of the head. Now this video covers the cleaning of the surfaces that mate. Uh, basically the cam cover and the uh, top of the head. The bottom is already spotless because of it was uh, made true. Now, if you have the unfortunate uh, process like I had, the shop didn't get this spotless. Got a lot of stuff off, so I'm going to get the rest. I already cleaned the outer edges. Now I'm going to clean the inner edges. I use old expired a credit card or credit card offer things to scrape because I don't want to scratch the surface of this and I got some acetone over there and I just got to work across it. Uh, you can also use a a uh, brass brush maybe if the brush is softer than the aluminum head. You don't want to scour it with anything especially not the uh, uh, scotch pads. So Get this uh, top clean, get the bottom of the cover clean. I did have a little sludge in my um, cam seal areas because a couple of the passages in the cover was blocked. I'll show you that in a minute. I just rubbed across this half of it with a cloth with the uh, acetone on it. Most of that stuff came off because the vat process, I guess, got most of it loose and off. So I'm going to go ahead and rub the rest of it with the credit card and wipe it again. Okay, it took me about a half hour to get the top of the head surface clean. Now I'm going to do the uh, underside of the cam cover. Here's the underside of the cam cover. Kind of looks like the top of the head did. And as you can see, there's a couple of small passages here that look like they were clogged. And I'm going to clean those couple out. That's what I believe was causing the sludge up around the cam seal. That could actually wear out your cam journal or cam seals, lubrication not being able to get up there. So Now, if you have no hardware on there, uh, the part numbers on the back of the cam, they'll have a part number with an I and a part number with an E. So you just have to read the part number here. This part number is... 3547601 PG it looks like I so that would be the intake cam and the other one over here I'm sure it likely has an E on the back of the part number on it so it has heck this one is the I one the other one is the E one but hard to see them so I have to clean it off to make sure but as I wipe that off, that's clearly an eye. Let me take this flash off to see if it, you can see it better. There it is. Starts with PGI. Okay, second round on this part number here. And it ends in PGE. So, this is the exhaust cam. This is the intake cam over here. Now, the reason you want to swap in NA cams if you have a T5 motor is the lobes are a little longer so they help the engine breathe a little better and and when you properly time them they give you some gain on your horsepower I'm under the myth that uh, they give you 5% over all of your power and uh, so for every mod you do, you'll get another 5%. Some people say it's just a, uh, like a 15 or 10 horsepower gain. This has been tested where somebody ran a dyno before installing the cams, installed the cams, timed them for performance, ran the dyno again, and they gained around uh, in between 10 or 11 horsepower. Now, the trick with... Uh, timing them is when they're properly timed they change the torque curve of your motor so under under the normal turbo cams 
your torque really kicks in around 3500 is when you really start getting your RPM. Well, with the NA cams, you really start eating into your uh, horsepower at about 1800 RPMs. So twice as fast, you kick into your horsepower. So that's going to make the car faster just in the fact that it moves your torque curve to a lower RPM. Now, I have another video that demonstrates timing. And what I do here, I have the cams sitting in the head, spinning freely because there's no lifter there to get in their way. And I'm going to set the cover on there. And then the cam cover. Then I'm going to set the timing belt cover on there and put them back in time. Okay, here's the cover set on and the cams in time. And I'll show you how the back of it looks because the uh, cams on the back should be straight across. Okay, the uh, got the intake cam there and the exhaust cam there. As you can see, the exhaust cam part number is on top while the intake cam part number is on the bottom. Now these lines, these slots in here, is supposed to be perfectly lined up with the line of the head. So when they're timed properly, that's straight across. As you can see, that intake cam is off just a little bit. It's like half in here and top on there. Now the uh, exhaust cam, the slot is more toward the bottom of the head. On the intake cam, the slot is more toward the top. So that's how they time them, and once they're perfectly timed back here, straight across in the slots, they're supposed to bolt the uh, uh, sprockets on there, release the tension on the tensioner, and then file that groove in line with the cover. So this is how you properly time these cams. You got to uh, make sure these slots are perfectly lined up on the back of the head. So when I set this... Uh, cam in here, this intake cam, it's got to be set in here so that the uh, part number for the intake cam is on the bottom and on the exhaust cam it's got to be set in there so that the cam is right there to the top, the part number on the top of the exhaust cam. So I'm going to go ahead and set these in here. Okay now if you look how I got the intake cam time near and I set the NA intake cam near all of these lobes are in a matching position. So you can see the two up there, the two down that side there, the two up there. And when I go down to the end, those bolts should be just about in the same position. And as you can see, two bolts up, one bolt down, one bolt down, two bolts up. So they're practically in the same position. So now what I'm going to do is... I'm going to drop the NA cam in there, then I'm going to time it perfectly, and then I'm going to swap the sprocket over to the NA cam. One thing I wanted to show you before I moved that cam over there was this cam sprocket is slotted. If you look real close there, you can see that it's more than a hole, it's a slot. So you can adjust that cam time in the back, and this... Uh, sprocket will stay perfectly still so I can rock this sprocket back and forth heck one two almost two full teeth actually it is two teeth and that cam in the back not move at all so this is how you adjust the, the uh, timing of the cam you loosen those bolts you move the cam on the back the sprocket stays perfectly still and in line with the cover, and that uh, adjusts your uh, cam timing. Okay, when you're timing these cams for these NA cams to get the extra horsepower and change your torque curve, what you're supposed to do is retard the intake cam 2 degrees and advance the exhaust cam 2 degrees. Now, when you're looking at the front of the motor, a retard is taking the top back so you're going to turn the cam when you're looking at the front of it which is the other end you're going to turn the actual cam uh, counterclockwise then when you do the exhaust you're going to turn 
the back of this so that the front of that cam turns clockwise. So uh, the best thing to do is to time this or how it's usually done. You time this with the cam sprockets on with a special tool that IPD sells and you put that on there and you make your little adjustments. It's a two degree adjustment. Not two percent, two degrees. A full circle is 360 degrees so you're only going to move that two degrees. Now with some mods you take the intake cam four degrees and you don't have to mess with the exhaust cam but two degrees on both the intake and exhaust will make a four degree separation the same way taking the intake cam uh, uh, two degrees and exhaust two degrees that's a, a four degree separation or if you just take the intake cam retard four degrees that'll be a four degree separation as well I'm not a hundred percent sure how that comes out on the dyno but it does work and that is an option that people take okay now the time this cam two degrees and you want to take it degrees and not percent uh, most people use the IPD cam timing tool that they put on the front of the motor since I have the motor out I didn't think that was necessary instead I went to a local retailer and I bought this compass here there was a compass protractor kit and this compass has 180 degrees on there and it has each degree on a little mark on this thing so if that comes in focus there, you can see the baseline zero. Then you see all the way up to 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on, all the way around to 180. Now, that line going across the ruler there, it has a center point. Now, you could route that out so that you could put a bolt through there, or you could just leave it there and, and stick something in the end of the cam and center it like that. Okay, I'm done with my cam timing. Looks like I got a plus two on the exhaust, a retard one and a half or two on the intake, and then I went around the front and I aligned the cams and secured the bolts so that the cams are aligned to where they need to be. Doing this cam alignment from the back with this compass was a little bit hard. I think I'd have been better off if I would have took a, a CD or DVD disc and made my own cam timing tool, took the sprockets, drilled a couple holes in the CD disc, and uh, then put some compass marks on there. Uh, it made a tool similar to the one like IPD has, because these CDs are like the perfect size for making a cam alignment tool, so you could probably make your own. Uh, DVDs are a little more sturdy than a CD, but heck, a DVD disc I think is like 25 or 50 cent, and the CD is like you know uh, 12 cents. So you make your you make your own cam alignment tool. I did it from the back since I had the head off. If you're going to do it from the front with the head on, then make your own tool out of a CD or a DVD. Okay, when you time these. Uh, cams they need to be timed in the head cover and not the head because the timing uh, cover attaches to the cam cover and you're not going to get that cam cover all the way down on the head to time them so I just timed them with the cover and not much different than the head because it's half of the uh, equation anyway I'm going to pull all these valves out because I'm going to replace the valve stem seals. So I'll get all this crud off of them when I get them out. Okay, now I'm going to take this clamp, this rubber stop to protect the bottom of the valve. This thing to crush down on the top of the valve. And this magnet to take all the valves out, uh, clean these valves up, and then have the head ready for the uh, valve stem seals to go in. Okay, I got the clamp with the rubber stop on the bottom of the valve. Then I got my clamp with my little routed out PVC pipe on top. Now I'm going to crank the uh, valve uh, spring down until there's enough release to stick my magnet in there and pull those keepers out. Well, here's the intake valve after 105, 106,000 miles. 
you can see the different type of uh, deposits on it. They're not too bad. Only one of them seemed to have a, a lot of carbon on it for some reason. And that's down on number five. Seemed to have a lot of buildup on it. And here's the type of buildup on the uh, exhaust valves. And I have most of those exhaust valves in there being cleaned and soaked. So this is the one that burnt. So you can see the type of buildup that's on the exhaust versus the intake. Even down the stem, just under the, in, the valve stem seal, uh, a lot of buildup starts. Some of them are worse than this one. Okay, I got the top of the head surface clean. All the valves out, all the valve stem seals out. And then I got the top of the cam cover cleaned up and ready to go. And uh, I'm going to go check my mail and see if some of my parts come in. I got my first mail order in today. Uh, they got the boot for the driver's side axle, inner and outer. I have the rivets to fix any loose uh, wheel well um, bumper attachments. I got the washer bottle cap. I got the remote control uh, casing because this remote control is all beat up and broken apart. Uh, IPD is the only one I know that sells that, but that's where I got it from, and I got the fuel injector seal. So, I placed this order Friday, uh, 75 bucks shipped. I already have it in hand on Monday. So, I'm real pleased. I, but I've been ordering from IPD for, heck, probably 20, uh, 25 years. So, I'm real pleased with their service still. So, here's the current remote. It's a four button remote, it's taped up, the ends are busted up, and it's not working right now. Not that I have a battery hooked up in the car and nothing like that, or know that the battery in this is right, but I'm going to go ahead and replace this case. Should just uh, crack it open, take this tape off of it, and swap everything over to the new remote casing. You could do this with several cars. I've done it with Mercedes and, and Jaguars and stuff like that. Just get the casing and transfer the guts over to the new remote with the buttons and you're good to go. No $120 remote and $200 programming. Just swap it all over, just the casing. Okay, the new one's on the left, the old one's on the right. I got the inner swapped over and now uh, if the battery's good, it'll work. So if the battery's not any good, I'll go ahead and replace the batteries. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.